Today on BYU Sports Nation, would you be satisfied with one game regular season win improvement for BYU football? Athlon Sports has BYU ranked 55th. Will the Cougars finish higher or lower than that? Plus, hoopster Trevin Nell off a mission and West Coast Conference Baseball Player of the Year, Brock Hale, BYUSN, starts now. This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, your host, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. What is good? BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, May 23rd. I'm Jerem Jordan. Spencer Linton is catching up on Season 7 of Psych. So I'm teamed up with a man HR likes to call the Terminator, Jason Shepard. The new Terminator, I believe, Terminator Dark Fate. Mm -hmm. Uh, The teaser trailer, which usually teaser trailers are like like a minute? I think that's a thing of the past now. Those are now teaser trailers. It's like a two and a half minute teaser trailer. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I love the Terminator movies. This not, one, not feeling it? This one's like, eh. I'm not either based on uh, eh. watching that. Yeah, it's like, eh. My wife doesn't watch trailers at all anymore. We just go in. In fact, because, we, because of, from a spoiler she perspective? She just wants to watch the movie. Gotcha. She doesn't want to have any anticipatory plot lines or ideas in her head. Which I kind of am jealous of. So the only awkward thing is we'll, we'll go to a movie with some people. We don't walk in until after the previews are over. I've noticed that. Which is a that. little socially awkward. I but love it's previews. good for her. I love the previews. I do too. I do too. In fact, I have to make sure I am in my seat way before the previews start. I don't want to miss out on anything. I'm not to that degree, but I understand why. We, listen, in sports we love previews. The show is that we preview things that's what we do the college football magazines that's, that that's i'm reading review that's magazines entirely yes. pre- what's gonna happen we don't actually know so what you're saying is your wife just wants to show up game one on versus the game. utah yeah exactly that's all she wants that's, that's what she, she doesn't wants. care about the lead up yes. she just wants to show up yes. and see the kickoff yes okay yeah. fine I, I can understand that with though. movies exactly yes today's rundown looks like this uh do you like 48 percent three-point shooters i do do you, do you? Of course. Yeah. Who doesn't? Uh, Trevin Nell is on the show. Why he flipped from Cal to BYU. He's going to be a part of uh, BYU Sports Nation today. What do uh, baby versions of Spencer and, and uh, I look like? Thank you, Snapchat filters. Uh, and on a ball day for the baseball team, Brock Hale, West Coast Conference Player of the Year, joins us from Stockton before the start of the conference tournament. We will give him a full dose and some of the karma for the Bad Cats. But first, today's headlines. Number one seed, BYU begins the double elimination West Coast Conference tournament against four seed LMU today, six Eastern in Stockton, California on BYU Radio. The Cougars took two of three at LMU this season. The Buffalo Bills announced they've claimed former Cougar offensive tackle DeAndre Wesley off waivers from the Indianapolis Colts. Wesley spent 2017 and the early part of the 2018 season on the Bills practice squad. He's lingered in the NFL. Yes, he has. He's had a nice career. Yes, he has. Men's golf begins play today at the NCAA Championships in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Cougars will play their third round, which will be Sunday for everyone else today. Very unique. They're by themselves on the court. Men's and women's track and field begin competition in the NCAA West Preliminary today in Sacramento. They have a program high 59 entries competing, which is the highest number of combined entries to the NCAA West prelims. The top 12 in each event will advance to the 2019 NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships, which will be in Austin, Texas, June 5th through the 8th. Good luck to the Cougars. They're wearing shirts that say Raise the Tide. So good luck. Nice. Yeah, I wish they were in Alabama with those, but yeah. Rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Tis the season for preseason college football magazines. Athlon Sports predictions are out. Let's break it down. In it, the BYU Cougars are predicted to go 7-5 and five in the regular season. Jason, would you be satisfied with a one-game regular season improvement from last year's 6-6? Six and six? Look, improvement is improvement. If you're better than you were last year, that's a good thing. Satisfied? Probably not. Mm. And, and quite frankly, I, I don't think the BYU players and coaches would be satisfied with that either. Regardless of how high our expectations are or how high fans' expectations are, the expectations for the players and coaches are even higher than that. I think the whole argument really changes if you hit eight wins. Like, if you hit eight wins with this schedule or, or more, 
then I think you're you're pretty satisfied with the schedule that you have played. At seven, you've shown improvement, but I don't think anybody involved would be satisfied with seven. Seven wins in the regular season is not good. To me, the minimum threshold for a good football team in the regular season is eight. No one, no one goes, oh wow, seven and five. I know the schedule's hard, but it's self-imposed, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna grant bonus points for that idea, right? Um, it's relatively good given the way four and nine went, given the way last year went when you're sitting at three and three and you make a quarterback switch. Okay. According to CBS sports writer, Tom Fornelli, BYU is the 16th toughest strength of schedule. Okay. That's really hard. It's tough. Um, what if it was 50th and BYU went nine and three, then we'd feel a lot better about it. Right. Okay. Here are my three reasons why we'd be fine with it. One, four power fives in a row. Only could college football team to do that. Okay. Two, it's improvement, but barely. And three, Zach Wilson's a sophomore. If he's a junior or senior, our expectations are bigger. In fact, Zach Wilson started one game against a Power 5 team. He's about to face four in a row. So it's going to be a a different challenge for sure. Therefore, would we expect eight wins in, in this idea of, well, it's improvement, would you be okay, in 2020? Guess what? That's even tougher. BYU opens with four straight Power 5s again in 2020, three on the road, then plays Utah State, Missouri, Houston, Northern Illinois, who BYU lost to last year. Boise State, San Diego State, North Alabama, the only guaranteed win on there. And at Stanford, I would go six wins on that. So I will never be stoked about eight and four in the regular season. What's the point? It's 10 wins or bust in terms of finishing relevance. So satisfied, I'm with you. No. But I would be satisfied if BYU won the first game against Utah. The countdown to the Utes. Romney Fuga, our number 98, highlighted today. I was really kind of upset that I wasn't on the show yesterday when we hit 99, where, where we lost a digit. You could have asked to just show up for that part. Like, I, I wouldn't mind if you were on the show just for the countdown. Like, we brought you in, we did the <laughs> countdown, and then we were out. I wouldn't mind that. Look. Let's talk production ideas on the air. Yeah. I do. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> now on to topic two. Tis the season for previewing the upcoming college football season. We've Uh been doing that. Everybody's got their magazines coming out. Athlon has BYU ranked 55th heading into the college football season. Will BYU finish higher or lower than what Athlon has them at number 55? Higher. For reference, last season, before the bowl game, Athlon had BYU at number 70. After the season, ESPN FBI number 60, CBS Sports 57, SNP Plus, which I like the most, 46th. I'd hope BYU would crack the top 50 with this schedule. I mean, if they go top 40, now we're talking. BYU's only done that twice in independence, 2012, 39th, 2014, 35th. That 2014 team was ranked 19th after the first four games before your boy Taysom Hill got hurt uh, again. Um, The traditional rankings, by the way, are opinion polls. They have zero meaningful criteria in them other than people going, well, I guess they're 18th. Um, I like the metrics-based one. S&P Plus is my favorite one right now. I I think... uh, I would hope that BYU could surprise us in the beginning and with the season. Remember, BYU was 3-1, and one, ranked 20th at one point. That was a big surprise. Kind of fell off that a little bit, but showed improvement once Zach Wilson got in there. I say higher than 55th. It's hard to really gauge yeah. <laughs> once you get out of the top 30, yeah. 35, where you're not receiving votes in those uh, opinion polls. But I, I would hope that the hope is you're higher than 55. 65 is right in the middle of college football, right. by the way. I would expect higher than 55. And like so many other topics that we discuss, so much of the answer depends on the first four games of the season. If you can move up in those rankings with wins in September, it allows you to basically overcome the inevitable slide that you'll hit when you're playing teams like Liberty and UMass and Idaho State. The positive slide of winning? Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Yes. The, the good news for BYU is that five of the eight non-P5 teams are actually good teams. We're talking about Utah State and Boise State. That's the good and bad news. Well, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, so, I mean, if, if you can win some of those games early, put yourself higher up in the rankings, I think it, I think it when it's all said and done, I, I fully expect BYU to be higher than 55. I, I, think, I think seven or eight wins with this schedule easily puts you higher than 55. S&P Plus had BYU at, what, 46th, I think, last year? with seven At 7-6. Seven and six. It takes into account other metrics, right? If you just look at your record, you don't... That's not enough anymore. In, in 1984, that was enough. 
Uh, well, BYU is the only undefeated team. They're the national champion, right? But if there was S and P Plus, and if it was basketball equivalent, and you had Ken Palm, and you had Sagarin, all this stuff back then, I'm not. I don't know if BYU is where they're at um, when they were at. They won the national championship in the right era, right? Nowadays, BYU would probably be in a New Year's Six bowl and not even get a shot at the national championship. Um, so it's 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 tough. It's not just about your winning record. And that, I think we have to take that into account with these schedules is, okay, how do, we, how do we gauge how successful the season was based on how hard it was? Because we see the strength of schedule number, but we don't know how to take that into account with the overall record. Agreed. Here's, here's the problem, though. There, will, there are a lot of people that will not pay any attention. And I'm not even, I'm not even talking about like f- just fans. I'm talking about people who may have some sort of sway in all of this We'll look. We'll look at it just based off of wins and losses. Right. I think. I think football because, needs to move in the direction of college basketball, where there are metrics. They're public. Yes. They're taken into account. We understand that the committee uses these as a reference. In fact, it's how they group yes. teams and understand them. There is no such thing in college football. It's a group of t- like twelve people. They get in a the room. They talk about. We have no idea what criteria they use. We have no idea kind of what bias, inherent biases exist in that. Football is pretty nebulous that way. Oh, by the way, you play a third of the games you play in basketball, so every game means more. It means more. That's why I'm pushing towards the 10-plus win idea of, okay, now you're at least in the convo. You know what's not in the convo? Seven and five in the regular season. Not in the convo. Moving on to topic three. Wrapping up our assessment of Athlon Sports takes. The rising star uh, in Athlon's preview of BYU is running back Darius McFarlane who uh, isn't a uh, country singer, uh, but he's a football player, who is to play the hybrid fullback tight end position that Dallin Holker played last season. Quote, McFarlane is almost a carbon copy of Holker athletically. Jason, who will be your most surprising player this season? This may surprise people a little bit, pun not intended, because this is somebody that... I think you intended that pun. I probably did. This is somebody that's known and actually played a large role last year, but I'm going with Isaiah Kafusi. I think Isaiah is poised to be the next great BYU linebacker. I love what he brings to the field. And I keep going back to last year in talking with the defensive coaches. They said a couple of different times he has surprised us at how quickly he has picked everything up and and basically how he, he forced his way in because he was playing so well. They, they were very pleasantly surprised with his play. He played in 11 games last year. He started six. And the six he started were the final six of the regular season. Uh, no bowl game, by the way. Um, he tore his, uh, the ligaments in his ankle against Utah. And by the way, losing him at Utah, that changed the complexion yes, yes. of that game defensively without question. Finished with a sack, two INTs, which, by the way, tied for first with Zane. Uh, That's six, way too low of a number. I, two I was the team lead. Come six on. tackles for loss, which was third on the team. He can play all three linebacker spots. I think he's the guy that surprises because I think he's the next great BYU linebacker. Yeah, I think he has a level to go up. He was my surprise player of uh, last year. He, yeah. came, he went from nobody to somebody pretty quickly. To me, the answer to this question is Moroni Laulu Pututau. Because he was injured, he's kind of off the radar, perhaps forgotten a little bit. To me, this guy could be the number one offensive player outside of Zach Wilson, so number two, that BYU has. 6'5", 242, as a wide receiver, was a deep threat early in his career. Of course, had that one-hander against Mississippi State, had a really nice deep catch late in the game against UNLV as a young guy. Last year, he was blocking really well, hard to quantify, but he was doing it well. Decent numbers, right? I think with Zach Wilson, he would have taken a step up. Of course, caught this amazing uh, halfback or the wide receiver toss against Wisconsin. That was a huge play in that game to win on the road against number six. To me, he's going to be the rising star on this team. If he's healthy and he's in, and he's coming off of major knee surgery, which is definitely a concern. It's a concern for the shoulder of Zach Wilson, right? It's a concern for the knee of Moroni Laulu Pututau. This guy is really stinking good. He can block, he can catch, he can do it all. I think he could be one of, if not BYU's best offensive option. He's one of those players who his teammates are in awe of how good he is. Obviously, the, the biggest thing that's held him back is the injuries. The talent is there. We, we the headband's know, there. Love the headband. He used to have a fro in high school. I wish he'd bring that back. Like He's really, really could good. Could he get a fro card? Is that a thing that we could, <laughs> could do here? I, I know that there's a lot of pieces that compile a team. Don't, yeah. o- don't over... Um, 
I guess, ingest what I'm about to say, but when Moroni Laluputita was healthy, BYU was 3-1 and and ranked 20th. I'm not saying it's entirely about him, but I think what he meant to the team was a big deal. So I'm excited about MLP and Bushman, dual tight ends, like, I would challenge that group would challenge any other group of tight ends in the country. I will I will put As them up against catchers. anybody. Fantastic. Our question of the day: Who will be the most surprising player for BYU football this season? Let's get to the voice of the nation. This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. At G Hansen twenty five on Twitter is my homie apparently MLP <laughs> is going to surprise people after getting injured early in the season. I think it's been a minute. You know, you know who else is in that same ilk? Zane Anderson. You brought up Isaiah. Zane Anderson. Yep, was Coming injured from- in the first game. Played four games. This guy's really good and perhaps forgotten just because of that. Well, and being able to have him come back as a senior on the defense at that position a senior is a, again yeah a senior again is is a big deal to have him there coming up if you've ever thought jerem may be too much of a baby when it comes to the schedule what? you literally may be right uh thank you snapchat and trevin nell byu basketball player ready to launch from deep this season back from a mission he's in studio this is byu sports nation byu sports nation is presented by the byu store the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Number one seed, BYU Baseball, beginning West Coast Conference yeah. Tournament play today against four seed LMU. Listen to the game. It's 6 p.m. Eastern time on BYU Radio. You can also watch on the W.TV. Welcome back. This is BYU Sports Nation simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We will talk with the West Coast Conference Player of the Year from Stockton, Brock Hale, coming up. If you missed the show live, by the way, download the podcast or watch the show on BYUSN.com. Now, listen, I think that I'm a shooter. I'm not really. Our next guest is actually a shooter, and that is the subject of our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Trevin Nell shot 52-48-86. Those splits are field goals, three-pointers, and free throws. His senior year at Woods Cross in Utah, 52-48-86. And he now joins us in studio 10 days off of a mission to Uruguay. Welcome back. It's great to have you, man. Uh, those are good numbers. Um, can you still shoot like that? Ten days off a of Mish? The first day back was a little hard, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm starting to get back to my routine, so I'm pretty excited about it. How much could you shoot around in, in Uruguay? Were there were there hoops in the churches, or did they have soccer? Uh, they had courts? soccer, soccer yeah. goals, and everything. Yeah. Were right, there so any hoops in Uruguay? They had a that? couple. I was I worked really close with the mission president, and so he took me to the school a couple of times to go shoot. Oh, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Really, very so cool. you went to Uruguay on your mission. You've been home ten days. Like, what have you been up to the last couple of days? Has it just been trying to reacclimate yourself to being home? How much How much basketball have you been playing? What have you been up to? Well, we took a family trip to Disneyland. There you go. So we took the little kids out there, and it was really fun. Did you see the new Star- the Star Wars thing? Hasn't been, it's not open yet. It's right? Not open yet. Not open so yet. We missed it. Marvel. There's some Marvel stuff? Marvel stuff? I don't think so. No. I, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. So well, Disneyland, what else have you been doing? And then I just, I'm moving in today. And so I've been, got my first workout yesterday with Coach Stork. It was really fun. It hurt, but <laughs> it, was, it was a good workout. <laughs> What's that process like for you off a of mission? Because some guys don't play pickup for a long time and you, you need to get your body back. And, and I know opposing coaches and fans think it's this huge advantage. You probably don't feel like it's a huge advantage right now physically, right? Yeah. Without a doubt, I have to do a six-week process to get my body kind of back into shape. But um, it's, a, it's a good little workout that they do. Coach Stork is, is an amazing person, and he's already hitting me hard. So it's, it's going to be exciting. So when you committed to BYU and you signed with BYU, it was 2017. This was before your mission. The t- at that time, the head coach was Dave Rose. Through the majority of most of your mission, the head coach was Dave Rose. How did you find out about the change, and what was your reaction when you found out Coach Rose was retiring? Um, well, I found out through my mission president and my dad. He, they both sent me a text, and he, well, my dad sent me an email. And so I found out that way, and I was, I was pretty surprised because I heard he extended, and then um, some things happened, and he ended up stepping down. But it was, a, it was definitely a big surprise to me because he's an amazing person. Um, BYU fans loved him. He, he did an amazing job here. So it was definitely a big surprise. What was your reaction when you found out that Mark Pope was the head coach? I was definitely really excited. He he recruited me when I was a, when I was in high school, and so we've already had that really close relationship. And I was able to meet with him yesterday, and so it was a, it was a really good 
Yeah, yes, you're 18. So you had a relationship. Uh, he was trying to get you to Utah Valley, I take it? Yeah. Okay. Um, you signed with uh, Cal, and then the head coach changed, and so you got released, and then you signed with BYU. So what was that process like of, of going to Woods Cross, and you're getting recruited by Mark Pope, and uh, I assume BYU as well, um, and then, okay, you know what? I'm going to change and go to BYU. What was that like? It was, it was, it was a journey. It was really good. Um, we had... I was just going through. I didn't want to have the pressure of trying to commit through the season, so I committed before. Your senior year? Yeah, I'm um, my senior year. And then after this whole thing went down, I, I ended up opening it up, and I went down to BYU, and the first person I saw was Jimmer Fredette. And so he kind of they kind of rolled out the red carpet and everything. <laughs> Bring it in the big guns. Was he randomly there, or was he there for you? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's say he was there for you. That's pretty good. But it, was, it was a really good day. Did you get a play with him? I got to just we sat down, talked about some stats, and then talked about my my game and how it kind of fits with his game a little bit. And then he's like, "You have to come here." And I was like, "All right, you, you like, sold me, yes, you sir, sold me. yes sir." <laughs> Speaking of your game, how do you think it fits? And I and I realize Coach Pope's going to play a, a different style than maybe what you had originally uh, thought you would be playing uh, under Coach Rose. But how do you feel like your game fits with what Coach Pope, uh, how he envisions this team being? Well, Coach Pope, he's an energy guy, and so he expects us to bring it every day. It doesn't matter if you're sick or if you're having a bad day. He, he wants you to compete. And so I feel like this year is going to be really different. I feel like we're going to compete, and we're not going to just shoot the lights out of the ball, but we're actually going to play some defense. And he expects me to kind of make threes, but also on the defensive end. Besides the relationship that you previously had with Coach Pope, what, what other relationships did, did you know anybody else um, well on the team? You know, guys that are now be your teammates. Do you have any previous relationships with any of, of your teammates? I've practiced and played with Zach. He was my rival in yeah, high school. That's so what I, I thought. So that's what I thought. <laughs> I played with him a lot. I played with Jesse a lot. I played with Connor Harding a ton. Um, Yo, I played with a ton. He's gone now, but I saw him yesterday, and so he gave me. A, he gave me a little, you know, the little freshman <laughs> stuff going on, but it was, it was really good. There's kind of this, uh, you know, north of Salt Lake, Davis County-ish uh, kind of vibe with this group, right? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> I guess you and Zach and Jesse, right? So we got, what, Davis and uh, Woods Cross and Bountiful mm -hmm. checked Okay. That's pretty good. We got those checked That's off. That's pretty good. Tim Klitsman, Utah County. We're kind of moving north. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, you talked about your ability to shoot the three. Um, and what, how old were you when you realized, hey, I can, I can shoot the three pretty well? Um, well, and so there's my uncle set up a video on YouTube when I was a fifth grader and it was like seven seconds left. I got the ball and I just shot it. I think my, my butt hit the ground cause I had to bend down so, so far to get, <laughs> get, get enough power. Um, but like just from that day, I just started trying to move it back and see if I can shoot it. Um, eighth grade hit and I shot the ball pretty well, but I went to this camp and all these guys were bigger than me. They, they were dunking it and I was like, I got to do something different. And so Probably that transition helped a ton, and I just started practicing, started being becoming a gym rat instead of just kind of kind of pushing off to the side. And did you uh, did you have growth spurt later? Were you shorter at this camp in, when you were in eighth or ninth grade or something? And then you grew tall. What happened? I was always kind of tall, but okay. these guys were just they were. It was eighth to eleventh grade, and so these guys were just. Yeah. Massive. <laughs> still waiting for my growth spurt. Um, <laughs> some so, people are. Yeah, some people. Some people still are. Everybody. Every athlete has those that have influenced them. You know, guys that they've looked up to. Maybe you try and model your game after. Who were some of those influences growing up that you looked up to in basketball? That maybe you model your game after. Um. Well, college level, I've always looked up to Jimmer. He. Everybody told me he was a gym rat. Also, he was always in the gym. And then I've also really looked up to Tyler Haas. He's a guy that shoots the ball really well, but he also works hard. He doesn't just let the ball come to him. He's always moving. Um, and then NBA-wise, I've always looked up to uh, um, Clay Thompson because he's, he's a bigger guy. He's about almost my size. Mm -hmm. Shoots the ball really well. And then um, I was talking to a couple uh, coaches the other day, and he, they said he was like one of the best shooters in high school. Um, college, he was really good. But then once he got to the NBA, he started like working more on defense. And so that's kind of what Pope is – um, kind of modeling my game after right now. Not bad. I Clay love Thompson. I, love, I like. I like I hearing that. I love the Clay Thompson thing. And yeah, he's what six six, I think. And you're six five. So yeah, yeah very similar. Talking to Trevin Nell, uh, incoming freshman here at BYU. Do you have a jersey number picked out? 
I don't, but I'm hoping I get 21. That's my high school number, and so let's we'll see, see what happens. Evan Troy had that last year. He did. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how it shakes out. Any, besides it being your high school number, any significance to Y21 for you? I just, when I started uh, my freshman um, high school career, my coach gave me 21, and he's like, well, look, you can shoot the two, so there's two points. You can shoot the a free throw, there's one point. So add them together, and there's three. So yeah. there you go. It's, <laughs> it's, all about the, it's all about the deep ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's what it boils Chicks down to. Chicks dig the long ball, Jason. That's right. Uh, even in basketball, I think, right? <laughs> um, what, what's the situation like for you in terms of uh, when you'll start school and workouts and whatnot? Um, I guess I'm, you worked out yesterday, so you kind of mm-hmm. begun. So I worked out yesterday. I move in today, and I'll be living with Colby Leafson. And so also we're both back shooters. Back from the mission back in Brazil. Mission. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he's a shooter, too, so we'll be in the gym a ton. Okay. Yeah, you so can rebound for each other, right? <laughs> I have yeah. a feeling there will be a lot of uh, back and forth, uh, maybe some, some contests, some shooting contests between you two. Is that a fair assessment? <laughs> Without a doubt, it's going to be a big competition. <laughs> <laughs> so six weeks until you go full go and mm-hmm. play full pickup? And uh-huh. Then, uh, six yeah. weeks. So around June 23rd, I'll be playing full pickup. I'm glad you have the date nailed down. Yeah, Without a doubt. Right it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a minute, and, and uh, for some guys, it's frustrating. Like, oh, I can't rent. And you're going to have to watch the guys run up, you know, and be like, oh, I wish I was in there. But it's just what you have to do. So I guess what do you look forward to the most um, as you are an incoming freshman to start your college basketball career? Um, the thing I'm looking forward to the most is just getting, getting ready for the season. Um, I feel like a lot of BYU fans are going to be surprised with this season with Coach Pope and the players we have. And we're going to make a, a big impact this year. So I'm pretty excited about that. Well, they can always use a 48 three-point shooter, 48% <laughs> three-point shooter. Yeah, last year was a struggle. We can uh, definitely use it. Well, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. It's like good luck. Uh, so good luck on the move-in. That's always tough. Yes. Right? <laughs> the workout, stay healthy. And then uh, do you mind signing our flag here? Dot it out. I don't think we have a uh, Woods Cross alum. I don't believe the, uh, we flag. do. So you'll, you'll be the first. Trevor Nell, appreciate the time, man. I don't know too many uh, missionaries who get home and 10 days later they're on uh, national television. Well done, Trevor Nell, for sure. Yeah, that's the elite company right there. Absolutely. Coming up, all hail the WCC Player of the Year. Very nice. Brock Hale joins us from Stockton coming up later in the show. That's all we can do with that. And Spencer and I get the (laughs) Snapchat baby face treatment. This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back, Jerem, Jordan, Jason, Shepard, and Radio Vision Live on BYU Radio and BYU TV. Let's check out the headlines again. Number one seed, Brigham Young, begins the double elimination West Coast Conference tournament against four seed LMU today, 6 Eastern in Stockton, California. Lock your doors on BYU Radio. The Cougars took two of three at LMU earlier this season. The Buffalo Jim Kellys, a.k.a. the Buffalo Bills, announced they've claimed former Cougar offensive tackle DeAndre Wesley off of waivers from the Indianapolis Colts. Wesley spent the 2017 and early part of the 2018 season on the Bills practice squad. Men's golf begins play today at the NCAA Championships in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The Cougars will play the third round, which will be Sunday for everyone else today. Men's and women's track and field begin competition in the NCAA West Preliminary today in Sacramento, California. They have a program high, 59 entries competing, which is the highest number of combined entries to the NCAA West prelims. The top 12 in each event will advance to the 2019 NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships on June 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th in Austin, Texas. Well, Snapchat recently created a filter that makes you uh, look like a baby. Okay. And why wouldn't they? Yeah, what? Because that's what the people want. Because right? Snapchat. Because Snapchat. Instagram uh, will be soon to follow, yes. most likely. It's very popular. There's some really funny videos out there. We saw ESPN Stephen A. Smith, Magic Johnson, um, babified, if you will. Uh, really funny. What does a baby look like? I did babified. it with my son. What is it? He looked the same. <laughs> <laughs> like. It's like, oh, you're a baby and whatever. But uh, we had a little fun. We, we put this out on Instagram for our radio audience yesterday, for our TV audience. Here's what Spencer and I look like as babies. Look, I want BYU to win 10 games. So how are they supposed to win 10 games if they're starting with four Power 5 teams in a row? It's like a bowl game every week. If you want to be the best, <laughs> you've got to beat the best. So stop being a baby, man. Come on. Come on is right. I asked you yesterday when I saw it. I'm like, so does that look anything like you as a baby? You're like, no, no, not at all. Well, it it only messes with your face. It doesn't mess with your teeth or hair. So a baby doesn't have those full set of teeth, obviously. Unless it's Freddie Mercury. Some very opinionated babies right there. 
Yeah, I've, well, I, apparently I'm a baby about this guy. <laughs> look, look, I saw that, yeah. and I'm like, that looks like fun. I needed to get in on it. Okay. So I actually did one before the show today. Well, let's see, let's see that one. Of course <laughs> I'm going to want to talk about going to the Big 12. Come on, Big 12. You can't say no to this face, can you? Please let us in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that your hands are disproportionately <laughs> large. Come on, Big 12. You cannot say no to a baby. You're stealing candy from this baby. What are you doing? So here's the thing. You can we, and, can we show your hands again relative uh, to your face? You and, Spencer, <laughs> you and Spencer at least look like yourselves as babies. You don't think you look like yourself? That doesn't look like me at all, I yes, don't think. Yes, it does. That looks totally like you. Survey says it looks like you. <laughs> Nailed it, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Fantastic! I love that there's a little rattle. On. My yeah, kids that's... are going to have a blast with this one. Yeah, if you haven't used this, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. Our question of the day. Who's the biggest bait? No. Who will be the most <laughs> surprising player for BYU football this season? At Twiggy or Stone on Twitter. I think we'll be one of the two transfer running backs. Mm-hmm. They will bring in new energy and thrive behind a great offensive line. Referencing Emmanuel Isupa from Rice and Tyson Williams from South Carolina. Uh, It would be awesome if one or both of those guys was in the mix because if BYU is going to have success offensively, they've got to have a good run game. Don't you think they will be in the mix for most surprise? They're going to have an opportunity. I mean, honestly, when it's all said and done, we've had this discussion. When it's all said and done, I think Tyson Williams has a chance to be the the go-to guy. Yes, yes. It could be Lopini. It could be Emmanuel Isupa. I'm Tyler Algier, perhaps as a junior, will they make his move. They have options. They have depth and they have options at that position, which is fantastic for BYU. Yes, and these are guys that are proven in smaller volume. They've had some right. injuries. There's a reason they've transferred and want to go somewhere else for more playing time, right? So perhaps this is the opportunity that, that uh, elevates them. Jeff Jones on Facebook. Isaiah Kafusi, he agrees with you. No explanation required. He's like, he doesn't need it. It's like Isaiah Kafusi. Isaiah Kafusi. I'm done. What, what else? At uh, Borgi Tire, is that how you say that? On Twitter. Zane Anderson. He's going to be hungry after missing last season. We talked to him Saturday in Nashville at the Fan Fest. He is extremely motivated and said this team is very motivated. There are these ebbs and flows, and I like to say that the pendulum swings between two alternating ideas, right? For the Red Sox, it was like, oh, the player-friendly manager. And then, oh, they're too loose. They get a little tighter, more organized and focused, right? The pendulum swings. It feels like the pendulum has swung with this group to where they are dialed in, focused. Their preparation is quality. Losing to Utah in the manner in which they did, blowing it, has motivated them to not do that again. And you have some senior leaders, right, like a Zane Anderson, who's back for a second time, who will be a big influence. The question with the linebackers specifically, Jason, you have Zane Anderson and Isaiah Kafusi on the edges. You lost everyone behind them, and you lose the middle linebacker. So middle linebacker is a huge deal on the defense. That's still a question mark. It is still a question mark, but one of my reasons in, in picking Isaiah was he can play all three spots. If he needs to play middle linebacker, he can. If they find somebody that is a better outside linebacker than maybe middle linebacker, you can put Isaiah at middle linebacker because he's already proven he can play both inside and out. The current plan appears to be, yep. Yeah, they, on the outside, yes, be those two. Yes, uh, and one, one coach told me, well, we could play both those guys in the middle. Exactly. So, you're right. There's, There's a some, lot of interchangeability. Is that a word? Yeah, sure. You just, add, you just add ability to any word. Great like, point. Jason, your Jason Shepard ability is really high. Like, you can add it to anything. I like it. You really can. Um, if you want to be an NFL linebacker, should you play middle linebacker at BYU or just change after? Because that's been the last two drafted Players for BYU is Fred Warner, outside yep. of the middle. Uh, Sione Takitaki, outside. Muta middle during the season. Right. Um, pretty wild. So could a guy like Zane Anderson move to the middle? I think you want Zane on the edges, though, Speed because wise. you want him to line up with the tight end. Yeah. He lines up with Troy Fumagalli of Wisconsin with a separated shoulder and makes the only uh, creates the only turnover of the entire game in a three-point win. Uh, that's a big deal. So I think if Zane was in the middle, he wouldn't have made that play, right? So I like Zane on the outside personally. So we'll see. Uh, Andrew Garrett on Facebook. Luke Andrada, who we had on the show yesterday, a four three eight forty guy. It's like my speed. Track star, football stud. Nobody's talking about him, but he's got some serious wheels on him. I think we're talking about him. We had him on the show yesterday. Um, but I think, yeah, generally speaking, he's not one of the guys in the mix. I'm excited to see how BYU uses him. 
Coming up, which former Cougar will once again wear the red, white, and blue of the Buffalo Bills? More on that in the whip. But first, West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Brock Hill. He's going to get some extra karma. West Coast Conference Tournament begins today. He's next as BYU Sports Nation continues. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest BYU Sports Nation right now, Kiki Solano starting her own countdown to the Utes. Check it out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have a competing countdown? Is I was going to say, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. I thought we uh, trademarked it. Is that a breach of con- contract? Is that a cease? Do we need to apply a cease and desist <laughs> situation? Here's, that- here's my philosophy. <laughs> More countdowns is a good thing. Oh, okay. I love me some countdowns. Well, good for you. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. This is our question of this day. Who will be the most surprising player for BYU football this season? At Russell's Muscles on Instagram. Okay. It's either a really skinny person. Yes. Or a jacked dude. Chaz Ayu. Chaz Ayu is off the radar a little bit. And I think he's going to be on the radar. Played as a freshman, got hurt, back from a mission. Uh, good player, four-star Very guy at Tim View, flew in in the helicopter on signing day because of Bleacher Report, the whole thing. He is a good player. He is in the mix in the middle as well, or uh, and a backup on the outside. He's he's a guy that BYU needs. I think BYU lost nine of the eighteen linebackers, by the way, to graduation last year. Perhaps that's eight with Zane coming back, but that's a lot of guys. You had guys like Adam Pulsifer who provided great depth, played more at the end of the season. Um, that did a nice job. So well, and that's what it boils down to with BYU is is the depth. Yes, you you have to have depth at all of these positions. That that's where that's where teams make the most strides is based off of their depth. If BYU had had better depth against Utah, BYU wins. I think. Agreed. No, Corbin Kafusi, Isaiah Kafusi, Matt Hadley all go down. That was one hundred percent agree. And Matt Hadley was like the fourth guy anyway. Yep, he switched from linebacker for goodness sake. Okay, our next guest is the West Coast Conference Baseball Player of the Year. He is really, really good. Looking to have a great West Coast Conference tournament. Let's give him the BYU Sports Nation karma right now as we speak. His name's Brock Hale. He joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Brock, we're giving you the karma right away because it's that important on a game day. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. How was Stockton this morning? Uh, yeah, it seems pretty nice. Sun's out, so that's a good sign. Sun's, sun's out, guns out? What was that? Sun's out, guns out. You going no sleeves? Yeah, sun, sun's out, guns out. Yeah, getting B- ready to play. BP, no sleeves, man. Let's go. What fascinating wow, things, Brock, what fascinating things have you and your teammates done in lovely Stockton? Um, I wouldn't say much. I mean, we had that uh, kids clinic. We did like a the WCC puts on a kids clinic every year. So that was probably the most fascinating thing we've done so far. But How nothing a- crazy. How was the belated championship photo? Because you got the banner. I think you may have even got the trophy. Um, what, what was that like? Yeah, it was cool. You know, I mean, um, it's all obviously pretty cool to have the outright outright title. But, I mean, for me, it's just kind of like it's, it's just different because I know at the same time we have to win the tournament. So it doesn't feel like we're champions yet, you know, just because we haven't won the tournament. So I'm, I'm more looking forward to – to the, the games we have to play this weekend. What did it mean to you to win the conference player of the year? Was that something that was even on your radar for you? Did you pay attention to it? What was the reaction when you got that award? Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of, I mean, that's not something, obviously you want to play the best your ability, but it's not something that was on my mind this whole year. But uh, yeah, Coach Herring told me in practice before it had been announced or whatever, and I was just kind of like, all right, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I guess they think I'm the best player. Uh, whatever, man. I, I, yeah. I'm just glad that Jux- Jackson Cluff didn't sneak up on you again for that. Yeah, either way. I mean, whether he won or I won <laughs> it, I mean, either was a good option. So it wouldn't. Have, it really wouldn't have mattered. I, I really just care about, you know, winning and going to a regional and going as far as we can. So now, Brock, I know that, let's say, when Jackson – um, earned some some awards earlier in the year that his teammates were really giving him a hard time, like referencing him as like national player of the week, Jackson Clough. Are, are you getting any good-natured ribbing from your teammates for winning the conference player of the year? Um, I mean, it's not as I've been anything like, you know, like teasing me or anything, but people, you know, said congrats and stuff, and I kind of congratulated me on winning it. But 
um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's, it's really cool. It's I think it's cool that I was able to win that, but at the same time too, it's uh, for me it's not something to you know kind of just like dwell on. It's I, I know I have to perform in in this tournament and our team does, so that's that's the most important thing to me. We're talking to uh, Brock Hale, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year. That's a big deal to us, not to him, on uh, BYU Sports Nation. Brock, last year I was looking, uh, or yesterday, I was looking at last season, and we've highlighted the 22 wins to 36 wins things. I didn't realize that it was literally worst to first. You guys tied for ninth, worst in the league, and then you went to first. So um, congratulations, first off. And uh, do you feel like you have to validate this whole process with the conference championship or at least get to the NCAA regional to really feel like you did this turnaround? Um, yeah, I, I, th- I think so. It's, it's something that is always, you know, kind of the goal is that you want to make the NCAA regional. So for how well we played this year and, you know, in, in conference and against these other teams, to not go to a regional would kind of feel like a disappointment. So not that, like, put more pressure on us or anything, but I think a lot of guys with how well we've played and how well we've done this season and what we've shown we can do if we didn't um, win the tournament or we weren't able to go to a regional, I think a lot of guys would probably feel disappointed and, you know, kind of like underachieved a little bit with how everything's gone. You face LMU today. It's a team that you took two of three from at their place. You played them fairly recently as opposed to the other two teams in the conference. Uh, You guys guys played Gonzaga and St. Mary's back in March. Um, But this is a matchup, and I know it's not you versus him, but it's the player of the year versus the pitcher in the year and Cody Piva. I mean, this is is a really good matchup, don't you think? Yeah, I mean it's gonna be fun. He's a he's a good pitcher. I mean, I'm sure he's feeling good too after winning pitcher of the year. But um, but yeah, he's not gonna be at his home field. You know, we're gonna be the number one seed, and I just think the the main goal here is just to jump on him early because uh, it could really destroy confidence in in a team and a pitcher if you you know take their pitcher of the year and score you know some runs on him early. So, well, it's a good thing BYU has the player of the year, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> um, we've been talking about who the potential football rising star could be this season. Who do you feel like was the rising star or stars on this baseball team this year? Ooh, that's a good one. I think, um, I don't know, you can look at a lot of guys. I mean, like I said before, there's a lot of guys that have kind of stepped up. But um, we knew, like, Jackson was going to be a solid player, and he's going to be a good player. I think he's definitely been one of those guys who's been uh, – a star for us, but I think one of the biggest ones that I, that I, I guess I've experienced was kind of Mitch McIntyre. I know last year he was a freshman, he played, and you can tell he was kind of, kind of getting a feel of it. And I think he's really kind of stepped up this year. I mean, you look at his numbers, and uh, he's doing a great job. So I think the biggest one for me, even even especially after, you know, me and him kind of struggled at the beginning of the year, he's really turned it on, and he's been a great player for us. So I think. Uh, um, Mitch McIntyre for me after seeing him last year and this year has kind of been a rising star. Well, and Brock, not only with Mitch, I mean, not only do you do you get him at the plate and defensively, but he, he has come in multiple times on the mound and pitched extremely well. You combine that with, with so many other players on this team that have been able to play multiple positions and the level of play doesn't drop. I mean, I think that's been one of the one of the biggest reasons why you guys have had so much success. Because, I mean, I know the team mantra is all in. You certainly have gotten that from everybody. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. I, I can name a lot of guys that you could consider rising stars, you know. And, and but yeah, that's been that's been the best thing is that everyone is, is bought in, and everyone is a guy that can step up and and help the team out in some way. So it's nice knowing as a player that you know you have you know eight other guys on the field that are going to get your back if you if you don't get the job done. Brock, let's finish with this. 2016, you guys have an amazing start to that season. You don't win the West Coast Conference Tournament. You don't go to a regional. 2017, you lose the first game. You win all the rest. You beat Gonzaga twice. The second game was a blowout. It was wild. You go to the regional. Give us an idea of how the feeling going into this tournament compares to 16 and 17. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. I think this, we feel a lot better just because... <laughs> I know 17, we got swept by Gonzaga, and all we had to do was win one game to have that right title. So 
we definitely felt feel a lot better going into this this uh, this weekend. But but yeah, I think I think the the feeling is just a lot of confidence. I mean, anytime you have the number one seed and you you've been able to perform against all the other teams in the West Coast Conference and beat most of them. I mean, we feel pretty good and we feel pretty confident. We know it's not going to be easy. You know, everyone's going to want to beat us, and we're going to see everyone's best stuff. But I think that's that's just part of it, accepting the challenge and uh, just kind of rising up to the occasion. So I'm I'm really excited to see what kind of our team you know is all about, and I think you're going to see it this weekend. Well, we are all in with this baseball team. Good luck today, <laughs> six Eastern against LMU in uh, Game One of the tournament. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Brock. All right, thank you. Okay, that's Brock Kale on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, big game. If you want to win that first one? If you don't, you can still win, but it's kind of takes a miracle. That's what BYU had in 2017. Yeah. Cody Piva, Pitcher of the Year. BYU's got the Player of the Year. This is a fun matchup. Six Eastern BYU Radio. Yeah, looking forward to it. This is uh, BYU is the number let's one go. seed. Going let's in with let's the, go. Going in with the opportunity and, to do something real special here. And Brock's right. Listen, their, their turnaround was tremendous, but if they don't make the NCAA Regionals, I think we're going to be a little disappointed given how good this team's been. So they've got some work to do this weekend, and uh, good luck to the Batcats. Absolutely. Good luck. Coming up, BYU women's soccer doing good in Samoa. Doing literal good. Literal. I love it. And what Cougars rep the red, white, and blue? There are multiple. This is BYU Sports Nation. Thanks to today's guest, return missionary hoopster Trevin Nell and West Coast Conference Baseball Player of the Year, Brock Hale. This show and all shows on demand via podcast and the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around Baseball. The number one seeded BYU baseball team beginning West Coast Conference tournament play against number four LMU today, 6 p.m. Eastern time in Stockton, California. The Cougars won the tournament in 2017. BYU took two of three from the Lions this year. Listen to the game on BYU Radio. Football. The Buffalo Bills claim former Cougar DeAndre Wesley off waivers from the Colts. Wesley spent 2017 and the early part of the 2018 season on the Bills practice squad. Golf. Men's golf begins play today at the NCAA Division I Men's Golf Championships in Arkansas. This is the second consecutive NCAA Nationals appearance for the Cougars and the first time they've qualified back-to-back since 2009-2010. Track and field. Men and women's teams begin competition at the NCAA West Preliminary today in Sacramento. The Cougars have a program-high 59 entries competing, highest number of entries in the West Prelims. The top 12 in each event will advance to the NCAA Championships on June 5th through the 8th in Austin, Texas. Volleyball. Heather Knighting had four blocks in a five-set U.S. College national team victory over Nippon Sports Science University in Japan. The U.S. will face the Japan under-20 team today. And the USA Senior Women's National Team is 2-0 in Volleyball Nations League play after beating Japan yesterday. Mary Lake has yet to see the court, but perhaps today as the USA plays Bulgaria at 1.30 Eastern. And this just in this hour, Ronnie Jones-Perry will be playing professionally in the A1 Elite Division in Italy for a team called Banca Vlasabina Millennium Brescia next season in Brescia, Italy. The Millennium Falcon? Very cool. Italy, the like place to play. That's awesome. Congratulations to Ronnie Jones. Falcon. Punch Perry. it, Chewy. Cougars in the minors. Michael Rucker threw two innings of scoreless relief, striking out two in the double-A Tennessee Smokies 9-3 win over the Pensacola Blue Wahoos. No relation to Virginia. No. And Colton Shaver went three for four with the double, two RBIs in the high-A Fayetteville Woodpeckers 4-3 loss to the Winston-Salem Dash. Today's rise and shout-outs begin with mine. Uh, mine goes to uh, this man, Greg Rubel, for finally watching the movie Hot Rod. Uh, I invited him to do so a few months ago. He did a couple days ago, and I am just very excited that he watched it, and the Twitter response has been fantastic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great One movie. One of my favorite movies. It's a great, great man watching a great movie. In, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, my rise and shout-out goes to uh, Rachel Lyman, and Lizzie Braby from the BYU women's soccer team. They have been in Samoa for the past month with a group called uh, Rheumatic Relief. They've provided 4,000 kids in the area with disease screening and education. Way to go, guys. That's awesome. Nicely done. That is fantastic. Uh, Rachel Lyman is my daughter's favorite player, by the way. She (laughs) loves her. Question of the day. Who will be the most surprising player for BYU football this season? The elite Voice of the Day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, celebrating 50 years. Lori Wood on Facebook. Luke Andrada might try him at different positions with his speed. Our own Swiss Army knife. 
Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget, use the hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to Dennis spend enough time for Jason. I'm Jerem. Shout out to Casey Coe. See you tonight on BYU Radio 6 Eastern. Cougars and LMU. Go Cougs!